Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormarks Build and Rescue. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today we are here with the full release of Stormarks Build and Rescue, the 1.0 launch. And we're already in 1.0.1a. I am in that experimental branch because today I'm going to be jumping into a tutorial for the module engines. And if you guys don't know how to get your game into that experimental branch, you guys can stick around and find out right now. But if you do know how to do that and have already switched your game over, you can just skip over. I'll put a timestamp in that description down below so you can jump to where the tutorial actually starts. So when you go on to your Steam page here, move over to your Stormworks Build and Rescue game, click right on it, drop down to those properties, and this menu will open for you. Clicking over to your Betas tab, and you can click into this drop down menu right here, that you should be able to click on the Experimental Public Testing Branch, and that should give you the setup for modular engines. So of course if you are following along with this tutorial, the modular engines are not part of the actual 1.0 update, which is, eh, I don't know how I really feel about that. They're a really cool addition to the game, but there are a ton more things with 1.0 that I'll be looking at in a future video. I have a ton of different like highlights on good things, bad things that I am going to be pointing out. It's just going to take me a little bit longer to get that video out. Anyways, one of the new things with 1.0, we have to make our own custom game here, and it doesn't really matter where we spawn right now. I'm just going to go to the generic creative base in a custom mode here. The Stormworks developers have actually switched it over so you can change weather and game stats, or not stats, settings in game now, so that is a really cool addition. As we jump into today's tutorial, I would like to quickly thank Exploderize for not only helping me figure out the different parts of the modular engine, but he also gave me what he calls his flat 8 he created to kind of show me where everything goes and a really good working engine here. And if you guys remember the small engine sound, and this should give you a little flashback because they put the same exact sound on the modular engines. And you'll probably hear it in my future videos with cars I create, but yeah, the small engine now has a new sound to it that's pretty quiet. I'm really surprised. Anyways, enough about the sound design and game. Let's start creating our own modular engine. And I'm going to create a base, and let's start getting a few parts for the engine here. So I'm just going to search up modular here, and this is the full list of parts we're going to need. I'm just going to grab a few so we can get started here. The first piece is that crankshaft, the next piece being a cylinder, the third piece being our drive belt, as well as a clutch. And that's just going to create the body of the engine we're building today. And I'm just building a two cylinder right now, but if you want to build a larger engine, of course it is modular, so you can go to your heart's content as large as a build box as you have. So the first piece we want to put down is that crankshaft, having those circles going to the front and to the back of your engine, and then connect it right up to the circle, so now we have two of them connected. On the front end where that circle is, we're going to be dropping a drive belt, and on the back end where that circle is as well, or the rear circle here, we're going to be dropping that modular engine clutch. And the fun part, putting in a few cylinders for the engine. I'm just going to be dropping two on this left side here. Now that we have the base of the engine done, we're going to grab an alternator and a starter to put on the front end here. You don't actually need the alternator for this tutorial right now, but for an actual vehicle you probably want to drop it on there to create some power from your engine here. And you're going to want to connect it to one of the four, what are these? rectangles on the edge of the dry belt so it connects the belt together and runs the engine. Alright, the next part I'm just going to dig a little hole underneath our two cylinders here so we can put in some exhaust for the engine. We're going to have to grab just basically any exhaust piece you want here to connect it up to the cylinders here. And then I'm also going to search up exhaust if I can get the correct spelling and grab the fluid exhaust there. 
Now for every bank of cylinders, all you need to do is connect up an exhaust manifold to a cylinder and then put the fluid exhaust on the end of that. If you really wanted to, you could have one for each cylinder, but that takes up a lot more space. The next thing we're moving on to here is we're going to go back and pick up our other two manifolds. The game calls it the cooling manifold and the intake manifold. And I'm going to put my cooling manifold on the front cylinder and the intake manifold on the back cylinder. Now we're going to grab a bunch of things from our menu real quick. First off, two easy pieces of piping, an angled and a straight one. And then we're going to go get, what, three other things? A fuel tank, an air intake, or what it calls a fluid port, as well as a radiator. So make sure you guys have the radiator, the fluid port, the any fuel tank if you want to create your own custom one, that's fine, and then pipes. So the first thing I'm going to hook up with all of this, I'm going to hook up the cooling on the front end with that radiator and just a couple pipes here. So just make two little branches off of it. It doesn't really matter which side and connect it up just like that. I'm raising my radiator up one so I can easily just connect it up like that. I can just get rid of those blocks. And for the intake manifold, one side is telling us we need to connect up air and the other side fuel. And I was actually confused about this when I originally built the engine, but you do not need a fuel pump for some reason for the modular engines. So you can just connect it up directly to a fuel tank running diesel here for the engine to work. And that's just about everything we need for the engine. Let me trickle check that everything's looking pretty good. Everything's connected correctly up. And this is a super compact engine. I have no idea how much power this will actually produce for moving boats, cars, but we're definitely going to see in the upcoming weeks what people are going to be creating with these pretty cool engines here. And I'm just dropping a propeller on the back end. You don't have to do that yourself, but that'll just show that the clutch is sending out power to whatever we want it to. The last few things we need to get this thing moving, we're going to need a battery because in advanced mode, or I guess technically it's the only mode now, we need to send power to everything. We're going to need a push button as well as a throttle. I do apologize if I type in a bit faster than you guys, but hopefully you can just pause it when I grab a couple parts and maybe grab those pieces and then continue or something. Anyway. So we drop that battery anywhere on here, grab that throttle, and get the push button as well. I'm going to put a second throttle here just to connect up to the clutch on the back end of the engine. So connecting up that clutch to one of your throttles, connect up the second clutch to that intake or intake manifold. So that's going to be your basic throttle for the engine here. And then we're going to take that push button and connect it up to the starter there. And now everything just needs just a little bit of power to get it started. So connect up that starter to your chain. And of course the alternator is going to be creating power hopefully so we can send that directly back to the battery. I really don't know how much power that alternator creates but that'll probably be something for a future video. So let me triple check over all of this and make sure it should run when we get it out to the world. All right, everything checked. Let's see it running with that good old small engine sound here as we hop out to it. All we need to do is give it a little bit of throttle, pretty sure I put it on the right side, and start it up. As you hear, it's purring pretty well. It's definitely probably not a very strong engine, but let's give it a little bit more throttle and then... Oh. Oops, um, can we restart that? Did they put a sound on the propeller? Do you guys hear that? Hold on, I'll be quiet for a second. I'm excited though, because you could probably make a very small car and or boat with this engine now, because you don't really need much space. 
you're probably going to take up a lot more space with the character than the engine now. So that is where I will be ending this episode here. If you guys do have any more questions about modular engines, a problem with your engine, whatever, you can of course leave it in those comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as fast as humanly possible. So of course I will be having a 1.0 update video coming out sometime soon, so watch out for that. But of course, if you guys did like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content, but I've never been great at goodbyes, but people need me, and I need to go.